Where are we going to, my friends? Revelation chapter 18. Before we take that, that scripture, let's turn to our handout and let's turn to line number one. Do we all have our sermon notes? Amen. Notice here, my friends, number one on the handout from Selected Messages, book three, page 412. It reads, my friends, the last great conflict is before us. But help is to come to all who love God and obey his law. And the earth, the whole earth, is to be lighted with the glory of God. Another angel is to come down from heaven. This angel represents the giving of the what, my friends? Okay, we are together. Giving of the loud cry, which is to come from those who are preparing to cry mightily with a strong voice. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. We have a testing message to give, and I am instructed to say to our people, unify, unify. But we are not to unify with those who are departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, with our hearts sweet and kind and true, we are to go forth to proclaim the message, giving no heed to those who lead away from the truth. Would you say amen? amen. Notice here, my friends, Revelation chapter 18. Let's begin our series here. Dealing with my friends, break the hold of the foul spirit. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel... Come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Here we find the repetition of the second angel's message of Revelation chapter 14 verse 8 which was first preached in the summer of 1844. Now, let's go through our things that we have gone through before. What does Babylon mean, my friends? Confusion, derived from the word Babel, Genesis 11, 9. And throughout the scriptures, what does Babylon point to? Come on, Daniel 3, verse 12, Isaiah 21, 9. False religions, false religions and false worship. And according to Revelation 17, Babylon is represented as what? Notice chapter 17, verse 5. The Bible says Babylon is represented as a woman. And what does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? The church, my friends. So Babylon 5b on the handout, 5b. So Babylon represents false religions and churches that teach heresies and live in apostasy. And when does the message of Revelation chapter 18 concerning the fall of Babylon apply? Notice here, my friends, chapter 18, verse 4. It applies before Jesus pours out the seven last plagues upon unrepentant sinners. This scripture, chapter 18 in the book of Revelation, applies just before the close of salvation, just before the second coming of Christ. Verse 4, amen. The Bible says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of whom? Come out of her, and that's Babylon. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive what? Not of her plagues. So Revelation 18, this message is specifically, specifically applicable to the world. Just before the seven last plagues are put out upon unrepentant sinners. And friends, what has happened to the people in Babylon? The church is in Babylon. Since 1844, once she began her spiritual and moral fall. Go back to verse 2. Let's read this together. Babylon the great is, fallen is fallen, and is become the habitation of 
That's your answer. And is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This evening, we want to analyze and discover what is meant by Babylon is become the hold of every foul what? Every foul spirit. Notice line number eight on your sermon notes. Line number eight says, what does the foul spirit represent that is found in Babylon just before the plagues fall and salvation closes? Let us analyze the phrase, the foul spirit, in order to discover the answer. The word foul is used as an adjective to discover the word spirit. Foul spirit. And it means, the word foul means what, my friends? Impure and what? Unclean. Now, the word spirit in this context means life. Genesis 2, 7. Job 27, 3. Verse 3. The spirit, the word spirit, could refer to either what two things, my friends? Invisible beings or visible beings or people. And according to 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 3, what is the word spirit referred to as? What is the word spirit referred to? People and prophets, even false prophets in the context of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 3. And who are the people? Foul spirit. Foul, unclean, who are the people that are represented by the foul spirit in Babylon? Foul, impure. Foul, unclean. Spirit, people. Who are the people represented by the foul spirit in Babylon just before the second coming of Jesus? Go to Ezekiel 34, my friends. Where are we going to? Ezekiel chapter 34, these are pastors, these are leaders, these are teachers who are getting fat and prosperous in many ways by deceiving the people. Yes, my friends, pastors, leaders, teachers who are getting fat and prosperous in many ways by deceiving the people. In addition, my friends, they're teaching false doctrines while the people are starving, starving for the word of God. Notice here, my friends, Ezekiel chapter 34. Notice with me, beginning with verse, let's just begin here with verse 17. Ezekiel 34, verse 17 reads, my friends, the Bible says, And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastors, pastures, huh? and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul, you must what, my friends? Foul, false spirit, foul spirit, but you must foul the residue with your feet. Hmm. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet. My friends, how would you feel to eat food that people step on, walk on, trample on? Notice verse 19, the foul spirit, verse 19, and as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet. And they what, my friends? And they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Would you drink water that someone washes their feet with? Oh, my friends, verse 20. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle Hmm. And between the lean cattle, because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the diseased with your horns, your power, till you have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey unto you. And I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up what? One shepherd. 
So these people who were fouling the food, fouling the waters, my friends, fouling, trodding, treading upon the food that must be given to God's people, they were shepherds. Because God now says in verse 23, and I will what? Set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Why? Because these foul spirits, impure, unclean people, leaders, teachers, administrators, even parents, were causing God's people to be in a famished condition, starving. Notice here, my friends, line number 11. What is one of the primary doctrines that the leaders that are represented as the foul spirit, impure people, unclean men, will be treading down, stepping upon, and fouling with their feet? Answer, the Sabbath. Notice here, my friends, again, Ezekiel 34. Look at verse 18. What verse are we looking at, my friends? Verse 18. Notice here, my friends, it's a Sabbath. Fouling the residue with your feet. Verse 18 says, Christ asking the question to these apostate shepherds uh, through Ezekiel the prophet. Verse 18, seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. Uh, my friend, sheep and cattle belong in pastures right my friends amen and sheep are likened unto God's people this means the pastures sheep God's people the church the pastures must be the dwelling place not for sheep now but for God's people where is that the church pastures the church verse 18 you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures my friends question what does the word residue mean? Huh? What remains? Amen. What else? Left over. What about remnant? Go back to verse 18 again. Verse 18. Watch. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? Mm. But you must tread down with your feet the what? The residue of the church or the remnant of the Church, go to your hand out here, my friends. Notice, notice, verse line 11b. Let's confirm that the foul spirit will tread down God's Sabbath before the second coming of Christ. The word residue in Ezekiel 34 verse 18 means uh, remnant. Get your Bible concordance to confirm that. 11c, who are the residue of God's pastors? Who are the remnant of God? Who are they, my friends? Who are God's residue? Who are God's remnant? Those that? Come on, friends. Are we together? Huh? Those that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of? Okay, let's quote it. Chapter 12, verse 17, Revelation. Come on, and the dragon. Come on, friends. And the dragon was wroth, angry with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant or residue of her seed. Who are they? They keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Which one of God's ten commandments does Satan hate, my friends? Above all the others, the Sabbath. So verse 18 of Ezekiel 34, when the Bible says, my friends, but you have tread down with your feet, uh, the what? The remnant. Who are these people? Those that keep the commandment of God. And friends, the act of treading down points to persecution. Are we together? The act of treading down, trampling upon points to Persecution. So the false spirit in Babylon also means persecution for God's people, those who uphold the Sabbath. You know, friends, we are told that we must come to a point, volume 5, Testimonies for the Church, volume 5, page 147 says, we must come to the point where we should say death before dishonor. Death before what? Oh, friends, death before dishonor or the transgression of God's law, God's Sabbath should be the motto of every Christian. What's your motto? 
Again, death before dishonoring God. I would rather die than dishonoring God. Die, my friends, than breaking God's Sabbath. This should be the motto of every Christian, my friends. Skip on down. I'm going to skip over line 11, 11E, 11F. You go to Ezekiel 32, verse 2 and verse 4. Afterwards, my friends, and you will see the foul spirit that is in Babylon also represents that the foul spirit will persecute God's people. Ezekiel 32, verse 2 through verse 4 points to, oh friends, the king of Egypt. King of where? And in Ezekiel 32, you will realize that God overthrew, God overthrew the king of Egypt because he was persecuting God's people. And the words used there, he was fouling the residue with his feet. Amen, my friends. Yes. And the king of Egypt is likened unto a lion. In the Bible, which nation is likened unto a lion? Amen. Babylon. All right. And my friends, what are we studying? Babylon is fallen. Notice here, my friends, line number 12. While this foul spirit is in Babylon, it has also been entering the churches of Seventh-day Adventism. According to the prophet Ezekiel, who were the leaders that were pronounced guilty by God? of treading down with their feet the residue, the remnant of God, fouling the residue with their feet, starving God's professed people while they themselves were getting fat and prosperous. Notice Ezekiel 34, the context. Ezekiel, watch out to my friends. Verse 2, my friends, these were the priests of Israel. These were the shepherds of Israel. These were the pastors of Israel. These were the teachers. So now what are we saying here, my friends? This foul spirit that we find in Babylon, it, also, it, it was also, let's go past tense first. It was also found among the professed Israelites of God then that means that foul spirit of Babylon will also be found among the Seventh-day Adventist churches. Notice Ezekiel 34, verse 2. Ready, my friends? Bible says, Son of man, prophesy against the whom? The shepherds of Israel. This is the same chapter that God says, my friends, I will set up other shepherds. Why? Because you have tread down the remnant, the residue of my people. You have fouled their food, fouled their, their drink. Notice verse 2. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto whom the shepherds will be, will be to you. The shepherds of Israel that do what? Feed whom? Oh, friends, are we together? Let's get some feedback here. Feed who? Oh, friends, they fed themselves. Then the question was asked, should not the shepherd feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe yourself with the wool. And what? You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have you not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. Oh, friends, uh, line 13, let's read the following quotation and discover the people that inspiration describes as what? The foul spirit. Early writings, uh, early writings, uh, page 36 says, together, come on, then I. Then I was shown a company who were howling in agony. On their garments was written in large characters, Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. I asked who this company were. The angel said, These are they who have once kept the Sabbath and have given it up. 
I heard them cry with a loud voice, we have believed in thy coming and taught it with energy. Oh, friends, I want to know who these people are. Not just, my friends, the casual, nominal, seven-day Adventists, but even those who profess to believe in the present truth, truth for these last days. We have believed in thy coming. We have taught it with energy. I had to examine myself, my friends. Will you? It says, and while they were speaking, their eyes would fall upon their garments, and see the writing. What writing? Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. And see the writing. And then they would walk, wail aloud, weeping and gnashing off teeth. I saw, watch this now. I saw that they had drunk of the what? Deep waters. And what? Fouled the residue with their feet. And what does fouling the residue with the feet mean? What is the following phrase? Oh, friends. And fouled the residue with their feet. And trodden. It means trodden the Sabbath on the foot. And that was why they were what? Weighed in the balance and found wanting the false spirit. Of Babylon will be found where? Among Seventh day Adventism. Babylon, the greatest what? Fallen, is fallen. And is become what? The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Notice here, my friends, uh, line 15. While, you see, friends, why we must examine ourselves. Hmm. We can also partake of the same foul spirit. And be declared by God a foul spirit. Notice unclean, impure person. Line 15. While the seventh day Adventist church is not Babylon. It is a fact that the majority have been drinking the wine from the cup of Babylon. The same foul spirit that is found in Babylon is seen and felt among the churches. You don't believe me? Notice this quotation here, 15b. From testimonies on sexual behavior, adultery, and divorce. Page 188, paragraph 3 reads, We must as a people arouse and cleanse the camp of Israel. Licentiousness, unlawful intimacy, and unholy practices are coming in among us in a small degree, right? No, in a large degree. And whom? And ministers who are handling sacred things are guilty of sin in this respect. They are coveting their neighbor's wives. And the seventh commandment is broken. We are in danger of becoming a sister to fall in Babylon, of allowing our churches to become corrupted and filled with every what? Foul spirit, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And now comes the question now, and will we be clear? Unless we make decided movements to cure, to cure the existing evil. Oh, my friends, again, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Oh, friends, that means, is that clear? Licentiousness, unlawful intimacy, unholy practices, and all its kindred sins. You become a what? A foul spirit. And you'll be lost and classed in with unrepentant sinners in Babylon. Notice here, my friends, 16b, Babylon and the people therein have a what spirit? A foul spirit. And God is earnestly seeking for messengers that he can use to expel the foul spirit from, from their lives and the lives of those that are sincerely seeking for deliverance. Go to Mark chapter 9, my friends. Where are we going to? Mark chapter 9. It's prayer meeting, my friends. I don't want to keep you too long. Mark what chapter, my friends? Mark chapter 9. 
And friends, let's discover that Christ wants to give us full and complete deliverance. Full and complete deliverance of the foul spirit that's in our lives. Notice here, my friend, Mark chapter 9. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, beginning with verse 17. Do we have it, my friends? Mark chapter 9. The Bible says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he tears him, and he foams and gnashes with his teeth and pines away. And I speak to thy, thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Hmm? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he speak and he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters. He was lukewarm. A foul spirit to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Christ saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the foul, what my friends? He rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and what my friends? And enter no more into him, my friends. Did Jesus give complete and full deliverance of that foul spirit, my friends? And this is what Christ wants to do for us. But will we allow him? Notice verse 26. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was born and he was as one dead. Insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house... His disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out together now? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by what, my friends? But by prayer and what? Fasting. Let's read and list the reasons that caused the failure of Christ's nine disciples of expelling the foul spirit from the boy and also note what the nine disciples should have done instead look at line 18b my friends the desire of ages page 431 says the nine disciples were yet pondering upon the bitter fact of their own failure and when Christ was once more alone with them, they questioned, why could not we cast him out? Christ answered them, because of your what? Your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting now the commentary oh friends inspiration says their what their unbelief oh friends that shut them out from deeper sympathy with christ uh, oh friends when we have no concern no sympathy for people it might be a sign we have a foul spirit a foul spirit my friend no love notice that shut them out from deeper sympathy with Christ and the carelessness, the what, my friends? 
the carelessness with, with which they regarded the sacred work committed to them had caused their failure, their failure in the conflict with the powers of darkness. The words of Christ pointing to his death had brought sadness and what? Doubt. Pause right there. So here, here was a crisis that brought what two things? Sadness and what? Doubt. And the application is for us, my friends. Many of us, we foresee crises, trials, tribulation to come upon us. As a result, we are sad and doubtful. The unclean spirit. Friends, let me just simply say what God is telling us. What was in that boy that Christ cast out a foul spirit? The father brought the boy to these nine disciples and could they cast out the foul spirit? I wonder why. Because they had the foul spirit. Do you see that? How many times have you read this story? Do you see my friends? Because they had a foul spirit. They were of no use to God in casting out, setting one free from a foul spirit. Babylon is what? Is what? And is become the habitation of devils and the hold of what? Every foul spirit, my friends. If we profess to be Seventh-day Adventists, and to give the last call to Babylonians to come out into God's truth since they are possessed with the false and foul spirit we must ask God to rid us of the false spirit amen. rid us of the foul spirit my friends will you say amen? amen tonight it must be done do you remember our opening song before we began our study oh friends what we want to know that we have the spirit when we shall leave this place. Notice as we read on here, my friends, the words of Christ pointing to his death had brought what? Sadness and doubt and the selection of the three disciples to accompany Jesus to the mountain had excited the jealousy of the nine. So if we hold on to jealousy, what's in us, my friends? A, a foul spirit. Instead of strengthening their faith by prayer and meditation on the words of Christ, they had been dwelling on their discouragements. They had been dwelling on their discouragements and what? personal grievances that's serious that's serious my friends i wonder who is so discouraged and dwelling upon it instead of looking to christ and claiming his promises personal grievances and friends when we hold on to personal grievances what state of mind are we in what thoughts do we conjure up what uh, Vengeance, revenge, anger, hatred, my friends. Do you see that? What spirit is in us? A foul spirit. So while we say Babylon is fallen, be careful. You might fall with her too. Notice here, my friends. Oh, for how many of us are holding on to unforgiveness? The foul spirit. It says, instead of strengthening their faith by prayer and meditation on the words of Christ, they had been dwelling, let me hasten on, on their discouragements and personal grievances in this state of what? Darkness, underscore that. In the state of darkness, they had undertaken the conflict with Satan. In that state of darkness, they went to, to Silver Star Road and Hiawassee in Orlando to pass out truth-filled literatures. You have no use to God, my friends. Those souls might be saved while you be lost. Hmm. Do you see, my friends, how practical this thing is? Next paragraph, in order to succeed in such a conflict, they must come to the work in a different spirit. Their faith must be strengthened by fervent, come on, 
prayer and fasting and humiliation of heart, they must be emptied of self and be filled with the spirit and power of God. Pause right there. So my friends, were those nine disciples emptied of self? Did they die to self that day? No, my friends. They were a selfish bunch. Pardon me, a selfish group of people. We must examine ourselves, my friends. Notice, earnest, persevering supplication to God in faith. Faith that leads to entire dependence upon God and unreserved, what my friends, an unreserved consecration to his work can alone avail to bring men the Holy Spirit's aid in the battle against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked what? Wicked spirits in high places. Oh, friends, go to Mark chapter 9. Let's take a look at verse 22, my friends. Let's read the following quotations and discover that God's messengers must be consecrated so that Jesus can use them to expel the foul spirit from the lives of individuals. And also, the, the individual that is possessed must surrender and believe, uh, not doubting, that Jesus can make him free how? Free how? Free completely from sin. I want to emphasize something here in verse 22 through verse 25, Mark chapter 9, then we close. It says here, my friends, watch. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire, come on together, and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have what compassion on us and what help us pause dear my friends if we don't get rid of the foul spirit will satan destroy us hmm will he my friends and the beautiful thing i want you to see here my friends some of us will all of us any back slidden person is in one of three groups they're either the lost coin the lost sheep or the prodigal son. But this man, I believe, my friends, he was and his son a lost sheep. He knew he was lost but did not know how to get back home. So he began to make sounds. He began to request of God for help. But how many of us, my friends, we know that we have the foul spirit but we make no appeal to God to get deliverance. Notice here, my friends, it says, Jesus said unto him, together, if thou canst, believe. All things are possible to him that believes. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and what deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Notice here, my friends, don't miss the point. Verse 23, verse 22. But if thou canst do anything, have what? Compassion on us and help us. Jesus responded, it's not if I can do something. Are you willing to believe? Huh, friends, are you willing to believe? Did this, man have, did, did this man have to surrender? Did he surrender? I wonder what he surrendered. It begins with a you. Unbelief, if thou canst do something. If, that's doubt. Do you see, my friends? Doubt. Notice here, my friends, line 19, see as we close. It says, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. The desire of ages, page 429. Listen now, how many a sin-burdened soul has echoed that prayer. Which prayer, my friends? If thou canst do anything. Oh, friends, I prayed that today, but with different words. Oh, Lord, do something for me. But no, listen, 
How many a sin burdened soul has echoed that prayer? And to all the pitying Savior's answer is together. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. It is faith that connects us with heaven and brings us strength for coping with the powers of darkness. What do we need, my friends? It is faith that brings what? Strength in Christ. God has provided means for subduing every what, my friends? Every sinful trait and resisting every temptation, however strong is there power available for us, my friends? It says, but, oh friends, but many feel that they lack faith. Faith, faith. And therefore, they remain away from Christ. Oh, my friends, let these souls in their helpless unworthiness cast themselves upon the mercy of their compassionate Savior. Look not to self, save to serve. Look not to self, but to whom? But to Christ. He who healed the sick and cast out demons when he walked among men is the same mighty Redeemer when... When today faith comes by the word of God, then what must we do? We must grasp his what? Promise. And my friends, how many of them are in the Bible? But here's one together. John 6, verse 3, 7. Come on. He, come on. Him that cometh to me, Jesus says, I will in no wise cast out. But guess what? He will cast something out of you. Amen. But he won't cast you out. Amen. Listen. Cast yourself at his feet with the cry. Come on, friends. What's the cry? When you feel overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed, the song says, my friends. What? Oh, friends. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. That is higher than I. Oh, my friends, listen. Oh, listen. Cast yourself at his feet with the cry, Lord, I believe. Please help thou mine unbelief. Together now, come on. You can. You can never perish while you do this. What's the next word? Never. You can never perish while you do this. Never. And friends, we must have this experience. Psalm 55, 17, evening, morning, and at noon. And when does the morning begin? Officially, the light before that sun rises. Find ourselves there. Amen, friends? Amen. When is noon time? Huh? 12 noon. We must have this experience, stepping aside for a few seconds, a few minutes. When it's evening, the setting of the sun. We must have this experience daily. Let's take our hymnals. Find me this song, my friends. Not faith is a victory. We don't want that one tonight. Trust and obey. Oh, friends, trust and obey. For there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to do what? But to trust and what? And obey. Come on, song leaders. Let's get this song. Come on, 590, friends. And let's all stand. Oh, let's take one. I want the fourth verse. So whichever one you choose, you can't miss the fourth one. I want the fourth stanza. Let's all stand, my friends, and let's really sing this with the understanding and sing it with the spirit. Amen, friends? Amen. After three, one, two, three.
Let's sing it out meditatively. Second stanza. Now the shadow can rise. Yes. Not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear. Oh, yes. friends. Yes. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and Fourth stanza. But we never oh, yes. The delights of Until all Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. For the favor he and the joy. And the joy he oh, are for whom? Are for them who will oh yes. Oh friends, wonderful song. Come on, fifth, last stanza. Where shall we sit? We shall sit at his oh, yes. Or we'll walk by his side. Oh, friends. I want to be there. How about you? What he says we will do. Oh, yes. Where he sends we will. Even to Babylon? Oh. Even in our homes, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Yes. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Were your spirits lifted today? Shall we pray? And as I'm praying, friends, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you, give you a few minutes. It doesn't have to be long. Based upon what you have heard tonight, in your mind, in your thoughts, silently, silently, respond to God. Talk to him briefly. Respond to him. He spoke to you. You respond to him. A few moments. Father in heaven, we believe. Help thou our unbelief. And we fall helpless, hopeless, because we need your presence. We are crying out to you, Lord, save or I perish. Save my children or they perish. Save my loved one or Lord, they or he, she will perish. And your promise says, if we do this sincerely and daily, we can never perish. Never. We're thankful that you are able to expel the foul spirit, the foul attitude, the foul thoughts, the foul words, the unclean actions, impure actions, and give us full and complete deliverance. And then, Lord, whatever you say we will do, wherever you send, wherever we will go, it's time, dear God, for us to sow seeds among the people in Babylon. 
that you will have a harvest, a harvest when you return. Save us is our prayer. And we thank you for speaking to our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.